and begin the presentation. So this is a presentation designed for families new to the US who have not really attended US public schools because we recognize that in many countries, the public school system or the high school system is very different. And our data is showing that in the area in Issaquah, Bellevue, Newcastle, about 28% of our families are uh, listed as having not been born in the US. Foreign born is how they listed in the 2020 census. And in the Sammamish area, it is listed as 32%. So the district recognizes that we need to address the needs of those families because we don't want those families to have any lack in equity opportunities or understanding of the school systems because we want all of our students to have all the opportunities they can. So here in this presentation, we are hoping to provide resources and information to families on what they need to know so to better prepare them for high school. And just a reminder, all families, there will be a presentation by the individual high schools starting in February. And this is just the beginning. So we just wanted to give you a foundation because what we have heard from parents in the past is it was too much and they didn't really know how to start, where to begin. And sometimes part of learning is listening to that information once or twice. So this is the first time and hopefully when you go to the high school and you hear it again, it'll make more sense. You'll better able to understand and process that information. So as I said, I'm part of the family partnership group and that is uh, part of the equity department and we have several school liaisons. Those of you who are in the Liberty School pattern, if you have any questions from this presentation, you can ask Ina Gangurdi. She also works at Maywood and Cougar Mountain. Those of you in the Issaquah High School feeder pattern can ask Liliana Medina. And she's currently the liaison at Pacific Cascade and at Issaquah Middle. And those families from Beaver Lake or Pine Lake, Wenli Mittal can help you. She works at those two schools and also at Skyline. And so she will be able to help you transition if you have any questions about this. So our job is mainly to support families that have immigrated from other countries to help support our diverse families. Um, we have a, a, a few different sessions tonight. So like I said, I'm Melanie Bonanno and I'll be helping you out in this session. Um, some of our other high school counselors are helping in other sessions. We wanted to point out um, that on the district website under programs, counseling and mental health, you'll see a really good access to the contact information for school counselors at each building throughout the district. So there are tabs at the top and you can click middle school to see current counselors. If you click on the name an email will open up and their phone numbers are there as well. And then if you go over to high school, you will see um, high school counselors as well. And just like the middle school counselors stayed with your child all through middle school, so will the high school counselors. And it's really important for your child to have a connection with that high school counselor and meet with them at least once or twice, especially as they're getting into 11th and 12th grade to make sure they're on track for graduating. Or Melanie will talk more as to why students can access uh, school counselors. Okay. So we talked a little bit about school feeder pattern. Uh, and so here's just a diagram as to what schools feed into what, which is basically me, what this uh, diagram basically shows is the elementary schools all feed into a certain, a specific middle school. So public school is free, but parents and community members don't really have choices as to which school. You cannot choose which school to go to. You go to your neighborhood school. And if you wanna to go to a specific school, that would be applying to a private school, but otherwise public schools are really dependent on your attendance area. So you can visit the school. Uh, if you are not already in our district, the school district page to get that information on uh, which school feeder pattern you would belong to. And that would be under attendance maps for the school district. Uh, and that shows you. So the only school that might be a little bit different is Cougar Mountain because Cougar Mountain students, some students who are originally from um, Newcastle, 
and who are now at Cougar Mountain will be going to Liberty. And those students who were at Cougar Ridge and IVE will be going to Issaquah High. But otherwise, there's a very uh, concrete plan of what schools you're going to go to. And if you opt not to go to that school, there is an open enrollment process. You can talk to a liaison more about that, but just reminder, it is hard and it's something you need to apply for every year. And it only depends on if a child has withdrawn and dropped and there's a lot. It's, so there is a process, but it's a process. Lorna, did you want to mention that we do have one choice school in our yes, district? Yes, please do. Um, there is one unique high school in our district called Gibson Eck High School, and um, they approach education in a very different way than the other three high schools. Um, so it is a choice school, and there is an application process and a lottery. I think we um, talk about that later in the presentation. If you go to the Gibson Eck website, you will learn a lot more about the school and how a student would express interest and apply to that school. Thank you, Melanie. And we have two slides, one or two slides at the end of the presentation that just talks more about that process. So the main differences between secondary schools in the US and in other countries, um, in, in the parents and students are really the managers of their education and working with many parents and parent panels and conversations with parents from diverse uh, cut from different countries. They always talk about the fact that there are very concrete paths you go to this school and then you take a test and based on this test, you can go to the next level of schools, um, you know, between grades K 12. Uh, but in the US really all Beaver Lake students will get it accepted into Skyline. There's really no application process. So education, public education is free from nine through 12. So all of the eighth graders will be accepted into high school and the students have the right to that education till they're 18 years old. So they can continue on all of the students, you know, up until a certain age to get that education. Students, one of the main things about education in the US is to really build independent students where students are responsible for their decisions, their paths, their choices. So that's really about creating independent learners and they're already, you're probably seeing in middle school, a huge focus for the student to be independent, for the student to advocate for themselves. And you're going to see that a lot more in the high school sec uh, section where teachers are really encouraging students to talk to them and not through the parents. There's um, very few really meetings between a parent and a teacher. That's not to say it's not possible, but the encouragement for nine through 12 is really to create kids who are independent and advocate for their own academic welfare. We're also focusing on well-rounded students. So besides academics, there's a lot of emphasis on students' mental health. There's lots of opportunities for clubs and sports. And you will see that there's a big drive to get kids to really participate in different activities because there's really um, a focus in the US um, and in most of the public schools that I've worked on and really looking at and have, helping the child grow their other interests to help them decide what they want for their future. So the ISD does focus on college preparedness. However, many opportunities and pathways are given for students to help them uh, you know, decide, is a trade school a better opportunity? Is a technical college another opportunity? What other opportunities may they have besides a two-year college or a four-year college? So we just wanna make sure that all the students see the many options they have beyond high school and depending on what they are interested. And one of the other big differences in the US is at least growing up in India, kids very often, you know, once you graduate, you try to get into that college, but very often they don't say, oh, I'm just going to take a year off or I'm going to try this. Or I'm going to go to technical school and then go back to college. That is one of the options we have. And it is very easy for kids to apply for college, not kids, but adults, even, you know, anyone in their 20s. So college is for anyone at any age. And it's not also dependent on specific tests because growing up, I remember kids had to take a test and score a certain score in a test to get into that college. Over here, 
really colleges are looking for well-rounded individuals with passion who will fit what they see as their college type student. So the other very uh, logistical difference between middle and high school is in middle school, your children did trimesters. So in early December, end of November, the first trimester ended. And then on March 17th, the second trimester is gonna end. But right now in high school, kids do semesters. So my daughter is currently in the high school and this week is finals week. It is an important week. They're gonna be taking tests. They have a different schedule. It's a big deal, but they have a semester schedule. Um, and that information is well uh, advertised. Students also are you know, really encouraged to self-select courses throughout the high school. And this causes a lot of angst and anxiety amongst families because they're not familiar with that system. They never really had to. Many families coming from countries not in the US uh, are not familiar as much with so much choice in pathways because the concern is, oh my goodness, if I do this pathway, am I making the wrong decision? Will my child not get to go to this, this college that they need to? And you know, it feels very end of the world kind of decision making or very, very a lot of pressure. There seems to be a lot of pressure around uh, choosing courses for high school. But, you know, there's a lot of opportunity to do mix and matches. Students can self-select based on what their interest is and also what their over end goal is. And of course, not all kids know what the end goal is. What are the chances a 14 year old what knows what they wanna do, you know, in, in majoring in, high, in college and beyond. But it's just to give them an opportunity sometimes to explore. So note that explore, exploration is also encouraged through middle uh, through high school because that's really going to help them learn um, what they want to do and see different opportunities that exist. So teachers and counselors are there to advise students regarding course selection and be, uh, and beyond high school plans. But ultimately, we really encourage students to make the final decision. And there are even more choices as students get into 10th, 11th, and 12th grade. So in 9th grade, the number of choices for classes is kind of limited, but especially you're going to notice that um, as students, and if you, once you look at the course, uh, course catalog, which will be on the website, and we'll talk more about that later, you, in there you'll see that in 11th and 12th grade, there are a lot more courses, a lot more opportunities. So we kind of start with a narrow band of choices and then just give, making them have, uh, giving them the opportunity for more and more uh, selection of classes based on what their interest is. Also from middle to high school, there are a lot more opportunities for clubs and extracurricular activities. And it's very much designed because think about the high school, do you know? Like Issaquah High has about 2,400 students. So of course, there are so many more clubs because there, the number of students and their interests are wide uh, variety. Uh, and so it allows kids to find their niche, to find people like them. And so they can have that, that sense of belonging and sense of community. So that, that is part of that experience to really help them find that belonging and community. And of course we have the school counselors just like in middle school, but there's also another very important built uh, section and that is the college and career center. It's a space in the school. It used to be a, a office or room. Now it's varies based on the schools, but students should visit the college and career center. And we'll talk more about that in one of the later slides. Okay, I, I think I take over here. So I'm gonna share just some terms and language that is used in America when we talk about high school. Um, so the beginning year in high school is ninth grade, and ninth graders are often referred to as freshmen. Tenth grade, your second year in high school, students are um, sophomores. And eleventh grade, there are juniors. And twelfth grade, your final year of high school, is senior year. And so you'll hear these terms, freshmen, sophomore, juniors, and seniors throughout. Next year's fresh, freshmen will be the class of 2027. And so that's that's also a term you'll hear the year, the, the June of 2027 is when they'll graduate. So you can hear that freshman class be referred to as the class of 2027. Okay, throughout, 
um, high school, the way that um, the, the documentation that shows the progress a student has made, what they will give to a future employer or a college or university or, um, or uh, an employer would be a transcript. So a transcript is one, um, one document that captures every single class that a student takes throughout high school and the grade they earned in that class. This is what a transcript looks like. And this transcript then provides a lot of context of the level of difficulty of courses students took, how well they performed, what their overall trend was in grades. This documentation captures uh, quite a lot of their high school experience. It doesn't capture everything. So it doesn't list extracurricular activities or volunteer opportunities that would appear elsewhere in a college application um, or in a resume. But this demonstrates their academic performance throughout high school. So you can see actually, Lorna, if you go back a slide, I think. Yeah, so, so yep. Um, so a transcript would be one portion of a college application, and then that wouldn't be the only thing. There would also be additional portions, often a, a resume, um, a description of volunteer um, exercises, sometimes an essay, sometimes recommendations. Each college is a little different. But let's talk more about transcripts on the next slide. So transcripts will all um, include a letter grade. Um, those letter grades, you can see there is a numeric value for each grade. So each class that a student takes for 0.5 credit would have a letter grade of, let's say, a student earned an A minus. So that 0.5 credit is at a 3.7 numeric value for the grade. Um, and in our school district, each teacher sets up how they will determine a final grade for the semester based on the performance over the course of that semester. And that could include tests, assignments, projects, participation in class. And each teacher sets their own, their own rules. So there is a teacher syllabus at the start of the year that should explain exactly how they will reach a final grade for the student at the end of the semester. In, um, in, in looking at all of the grades that a student has earned, each of those letter grades with its numeric value, if you take the average of all of those grades over time, that is what the grade point average is. You will hear that term in America. Grade point average is one numeric value that represents the average of all of your grades throughout high school. Um, so a student may get some A's, some B minuses, a, you know, smattering of grades, and then overall, all of those grades might average out to a 3.5, and that gives college a, a sense of the overall uh, trend. And that appears on the transcript as well. Um, in, in, some, um, in, in some states or in some schools, um, the school might provide students with a class rank which is typically done by some equation of looking at students in order of their GPA. Sometimes it factors in the rigor of their classwork. Issaquah School District does not rank students. So we do not provide a class rank. What we have learned is that most colleges do not find this data point valuable. It doesn't give a good explanation where the transcript tells a much more thorough story. So there's no class rank in our district. So, over the course of high school, each semester class that a student takes is for half a credit, so for 0.5 credit. So if I take English first semester and second semester, I earn one credit of English in ninth grade. Um, and then because there are seven periods in the day, each semester you're taking seven classes. And by the end of sophomore or, uh, ninth grade year, if you've passed all seven classes, you have seven credits. Each semester, 3.5 credits, seven at the end of the year. Um, it could be that a student does not pass a class. They, they don't earn credit. 
um, they stumble and, and may not succeed in a class. Um, and, and that is something where, because of the way our schedule is set up, there is the ab ability to recover within the school day, um, progressing towards a total of 24 credits needed to graduate. So over the course of four years, you take 28 credits, you must earn a minimum of 24 to graduate. So there's a little margin of error built in. Um, students, a student who has struggled quite a lot in high school, um, we should mention that students have the right to their public education until they earn their diploma or through the year in which they turn 21. So most students will graduate around age 18 at the end of four years of high school. Um, sometimes if there are some additional credits they have not yet earned and still need to earn, they will continue, for example, into a fifth year of high school. And that's um, free and a part of our public education. Washington State does set compulsory attendance laws. So that means the state law says that children age eight through 18 must attend school. There are some exceptions and they're rare, but typically this is saying we, we see a need for all students to attend school. And it is not typical that you would just decide at age 14, school is not for me, I'm not going anymore we are held responsible for um, ensuring that we are engaging students through that, that school experience. Okay, next slide. So we showed you the example of a high school transcript and this is a Washington state one and Melanie, correct me if I'm wrong, but each state has kind of guidelines as to what appears on the transcript. And yeah. so the ISCA school district follows the guidelines set by Washington state and all the coding and everything is very specific as to what the state requires. And I right. know this is a teeny tiny photo and you can't really read it, but we just want to give you a view. It's a two page document sometimes, depending on how many classes, but here's one and I'm going to zoom in on this bottom section on this bottom section of the transcript in the next slide, just to show you some more detail. So over here, you can see that uh, sometimes some of you might have, some of our eighth grade students might be taking high school level classes and that will be appearing on the transcript and that grade will appear. It also will indicate that they really took it in eighth grade. So you can see it shows the grade level they took it. Um, on the transcript, they, it also indicates if they're honors classes and so forth. So this is kind of the information that colleges are looking at if they're looking for to see if students took rigorous classes and so forth. There are uh, codes that universities can read to help them better understand the classes that a student took. It also helps within the uh, transcript, there's coding to show if the student did it online, or if the student did it in Running Start, or you know how many uh, credits were attempted, how many were earned. So there's a lot of information within this transcript. But one thing it does, or some things it does not in include, as Melanie mentioned, is it doesn't include any discipline data, any attendance data. If this child has an IEP for special services, if the child is in the ELL program and parents have no influence as to what's on the transcript. So you cannot say, I don't want this to show or not to show. The, the one couple exceptions being, if uh, your child took a eighth grade course and is not doing well in it, thus you can make a decision, a one-time decision to have that grade not appear on the transcript. And in high school, if you withdrew within a certain time frame from specific certain classes, then it does, they have an opportunity for it to appear as a W, as a withdrawal. But again, um, very often, Melanie, right, that they still appear as a W on your transcript. That's right, yeah. So it's a very visible document as to what your child did from ninth through 12th grade. Um, you, some of you are asking a lot of questions in the chat. I don't want to derail us because if we get through this, then I can come back and answer all of those. So I and thank you so much for being patient, but I will we will go through those questions at the end, I promise. But it's a good thing to just type them in so we you know we know what kind of questions you're looking at. Uh, so Melanie, would you mind sharing some information on this slide? 
Sure, this is, um, this is the summary that appears toward the bottom of the transcript. So all of the classes and grades are listed. And then there is a, a summary report um, at the end. And so I can point out a few things here. Um, the transcript will show any high school level class taken by a student. And that would include if you're a student right now is, is in eighth grade, but taking high school level Spanish, biology, um, algebra one, those credits will automatically appear on their high school transcript as well. Then for the classes that are high school level classes taken in middle school, there is the opportunity to remove them from your transcript, but it's a one-time only opportunity. Once you've removed it, you can never put it back. So what we recommend is that students wait until their junior year to decide if there's anything from middle school that they'd like to remove from their transcript. There is no harm in waiting until junior year to make that decision. Um, but those credits will automatically appear on your transcript. And so they're already counting towards high school graduation requirements. Um, you'll see for each semester, there is a line, the first column there says cred earned, that's credits earned, and followed by credits attempted. So if a student um, took seven classes, it would be uh, 3.5 credits attempted. Um, let's say they only passed six of those classes, 3.0 credits earned. Uh, the grade point average for each semester appears over in the right-hand column. And then at the bottom of that column, the cumulative, you'll see um, cum, uh, the black arrow is pointing to that, all the way over on the right, that is the cumulative GPA, the average of all of the grades over the course of high school. Um, right below that, you'll see in addition to credits needed to graduate, there are a couple additional non-credit requirements. One is the high school and beyond plan, we'll talk more about that later. And that will show on a transcript simply as met or not met. So throughout high school, it will show as not met because you can't complete it until the end of your senior year. And that's the point when all of the work that you've done along the way comes to um, fully complete and that becomes marked met. Uh, Washington State History is a requirement that typically our students are completing in the third trimester of seventh grade social studies. So it's not a credit that shows on the high school transcript, but it is a, a, an acknowledgement that must appear on their transcript. If a student didn't take, uh, didn't do third trimester of social studies in his class school district, there are other ways to meet that requirement later in high school. And then just below that, you will see um, graduation pathway. We'll talk more about that. That's another requirement. It'll show us met or not met. What uh, there, the next two items are not requirements to graduate, um, but they are just accomplishments that could be reflected on a student's transcript. In this case, uh, the Washington State Seal of Biliteracy simply acknowledges that a student is, um, is biliterate and, and emphasizes that strength on their transcript, um, which is something that colleges value and, and would appreciate seeing. So, over the course of high school, you are accumulating a record of everything you've done on a transcript. And then um, we've mentioned Parchment on here. Parchment is a, um, a company, an organization website, uh, which we use to process all transcript requests. So seniors who are applying to colleges will log into their account on Parchment, and then they can place an order to say, I would like my transcript sent to these three schools, or I'd like to see an unofficial copy of my transcript. And then that gets processed and sent off to the colleges. So it's not a case where you go to the school, you pick up a transcript, and then you send it to the college. It's all done through a service called Parchment. And there is a link there um, to learn more about that later in high school. Thank you, Melanie. And one of the things I want to mention is this uh, example of a transcript we are sharing with you was only until 11th grade. This example was not did not include the senior classes the student took. And you can see that at the end of their junior year, they had a 3.8 grade point average. And the question was, if they choose to take something off from eighth grade, would that uh, 
affect their grade point average and that would be yes. So they choose not to use their class, their GPA from those classes in eighth grade, then that would not reflect on the accumulative grade. Just to note though, most likely it's a biology or math class and because they're in semester, trimester units, that becomes a little bit more complicated, um, I think, and, but I'll let Melanie talk about that towards the end. Okay, uh, so let's go to the next slide. So how to graduate from high school. Melanie, I think you're gonna talk about that. We talked about the 24 credits to graduate needed. We can go a little bit more into detail on another slide, but she, Melanie had mentioned that students need to earn a minimum number of high school credits, which is 24. Uh, credits show that the students have met the requirements by passing a course, which is A, B, C, or a D, a grade level, grade of F is not passing. And so you need to check with the teacher's syllabus to see what determines if the grade was an F. Most often it's 59.9% or lower. So a child needs to get above that. And then as we talked about earlier, each one of the different grades is associated uh, with a grade point value that is used to create, find or determine the student's grade point average, which is part of the, the transcript process. And that is something that people talk about frequently children's grade point average. And so as we also talked about that, there are possible 28 credits that students can earn because there are seven classes um, that they take. And so seven classes times four years in high school is 28, but they only need 24 credits to graduate. And so that gives students a nice little uh, leeway of being able to play with some classes um, you know, and some options or students who might be struggling here and there to, um, if they don't pass a class, that there's some flexibility there too. So fulfilling these class requirements was just one part of the graduation process. So the type of courses and getting passing grades is one. And then beyond that, the next one is crafting a high school and beyond plan. Each student will have a high school plan to guide him or her through the experience and including plans for post-secondary education or training and career. Students create the high school and beyond plan in cooperation with parents, guardians, and school staff. Um, honestly, a lot of the students work on it in class and they're asked to talk to their parents about it and have discussions on their, with their parents. And they really start working on this in eighth grade. Because in eighth grade, your child might be working on something called Zello and uh, they're taking surveys, doing surveys, they're learning more about what their interests are, what and it even helps you kind of look at different colleges that, um, that meet the need for the, the major that the course or the major that they wanna go into. So they do these different activities in, in school. In eighth grade, your children are doing that in their homeroom class. And as they do that, it kind of gives them ideas as to what they're thinking of for their career and potentially it, the Zello uh, program also helps them look at different colleges that might uh, they might be able to go to. Uh, Melanie, do you want to talk more about this slide? Yes, I'm sorry, I got a little distracted answering questions. Oh. So we talked about there are specific classes and credits you need to earn. There is a high school and beyond plan, which is an exploration from middle school into um, the end of high school of where you'd like to be after high school and what you can be doing in, in high school to progress to those goals. Um, we talked a little bit um, earlier about Washington state history. So that's something we have to ensure every student has learned um, at some point in time typically in seventh grade in Isquah School District, um, although there are opportunities to earn, um, to take a, a Washington State history class in college that would, or in high school, that would also meet that requirement. And then I wanna talk a little bit about the third bullet. This is, uh, this is a little, can be a little bit complex. Um, each student must meet a graduation pathway to graduate. Um, the link there will take you to the district website that's, or I think to the um, state oh, yeah. site that describes more about what a graduation pathway is. Most of our students take- We the, have another slide on that. Let's okay, wait. Okay, great. 
Exactly. Most of our students take the state assessment exam and, um, and that is how they meet their graduation pathway. Um, and that would be in English, language arts and math, but we'll talk more about this in just a bit. Also the high school and beyond pathway, uh, beyond plan. There is more information on each of the school's websites. And if you visit them, you can actually do that even now. When I send you the web, this a PowerPoint, you can actually look around. But each, your children are expected to do certain assignments. So my daughter, I said, was in ninth grade. And sometime in October, she worked and completed her ninth grade experience, um, one of them. So she did the assignment on over here in 10th grade, they have to do certain assignments. The school gives the students time to work on this in school, but it is part of the high school and beyond plan. And each year they have to do certain things. And at the end of their 12th grade year, they will complete it. Uh, and there are certain things to do like an exit interview. And then once they've completed it, the school can give them the, you know, they've met their high school and beyond path. We plan sometime the end of the 12th grade year. But this is designed to help students develop that understanding as to what they are interested, what their future career could be and so forth. Uh, and so that is all part of that. And so it says, yes, students are responsible for uh, the grade level assignments throughout the course of the year. And you can see they use flex time uh, in the College and Career Center to, to, if they need help, they can get help in the College and Career Center but they do it on something called Zello and you can talk to your child now. Eighth graders are now starting to work on Zello. If they haven't started already, they will by the end June. of this year. Yeah. <laughs> June? No, soon. soon. Yeah, in, next, soon. in the next several weeks, so they'll be yes. seeing that. Zello is a lot of fun. My daughter enjoyed doing those activities last year. So um, do you wanna take this Melanie? I said I would, but I just- sure, I can, no, I can take this. This is, um, this is a chart that shows um, in, so for each subject area, it's showing in the second column, what are the required credits to earn a high school diploma? And then in the next column, what are the college entrance requirements? What, what must a student demonstrate to a college that they have met. And you can see they're fairly well aligned. Um, there's a couple things that I'd like to point out specifically. Um, colleges like to see students doing more than the minimum. So while it is three years to graduate, um, three years of social studies to graduate from high school, taking a fourth year of social studies shows you know, continued academic rigor in a college schedule. It might not be required. Um, but in some, some colleges may require more rigor through, throughout, or it may make a student more competitive in a college application. Um, minimum of math through Algebra II um, is typically for most colleges. Again, if a student is very interested in a math-heavy program, taking more math, um, and typically taking a math class in senior year is strongly recommended. Some colleges are specific about the science classes needed to graduate. So while we say two lab science classes and then any other science class lab or not um, will meet your requirement, there are many colleges that specifically want to see biology and at least one math-based science class, and that's traditionally um, chemistry or physics. Um, world language, two, two years of a world language progressing um, is recommended both for graduating from high school and colleges. But I wanna acknowledge, as I said earlier, if a student is um, has strong reading, writing, listening, and speaking skills in, um, in another language, there is a test that they can sit, a world language competency test that they can sit when they, um, when they are a high school student and they can show their, their, their competency in that language, which can earn them up to four credits of world language without even taking a class. So that's a great opportunity for students to explore. Um, some colleges are uh, more specific about the art credit that they would like to see a student has taken, more of a traditional fine art, um, like music, drawing, um, dance 
things along those lines. So uh, it is a good idea to look at colleges, college entrance requirements and see if they have specifics on art. We may take more technical art than a, a college might be more specific. Um, colleges don't specifically require students to have taken PE health or, or CTE, but they do typically expect a student to have graduated from high school. So by meeting those requirements to graduate from high school, not only are you getting your diploma, you're getting great experience, and then you're also expressing that strength in a college application. So I wanna point out that, um, that, that all of our classes, whether, whether a student is choosing um, lit literature one, honors literature one, or um, in 11th grade, whether they're taking American Lit or they're taking an advanced placement or, or IB language arts class, all of those classes are college preparatory classes. So our, our standard curriculum is college preparatory. Um, and you can know that any of the choices that you're making for whether you choose English 9 or Honors English 9, that's a college prep class. Um, and they meet college entrance requirements. So each college is a little bit different. You can go to any college website and see their entrance requirements to learn a little bit more, but this gives you kind of a broad overview. Next slide. Thank you. Oh, Melanie, can you uh, confirm a couple of things? So yes. if a student, a student can take, how many world language tests are available? Oh, because I, there is a really, really broad yeah. variety. I don't, so I mean, don't, yeah, we don't have all of them, but you can check with your child's counselor because you can take your child, not you, but your child can take a world language test in a language that they're fluent in. And it's not just a language that the ISD offers. It can be Correct. a plethora of other uh, languages and they just need to be fluent in those four. And based on how they score on that test, they can get a certain number of credits. Correct? Yes, they can. Um, the, and maximum, so, the maximum number of credits a student can get is four. Okay. Yeah. Four. And so again, it doesn't have to be a language that we currently teach. So if your child is super fluent in a different language, they can take the test and get credit for that language depending on the score. So some kids, if they you know not really as good as in reading and writing that language, maybe they'll only score one or two, but they can go up to four. Also, a note that. AP and IB, we'll talk a little bit more, but not too much because students cannot take AP and IB classes in ninth grade. Also, um, AP is advanced placement and only available at Isqua High and Liberty and IB is only offered at Skyline. But if a child does take an AP or IB class, that coding is listed over here, correct, Melanie? And so yes, you don't get extra credit for it, but it appears in the coding. That the rigor of that classwork is evident from the transcript. You can see the designations in the right-hand column show that a student took harder and more rigorous curriculum to earn that grade that they earned. And colleges do factor that in. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. So, um, and then I think there was a little bit of confusion on the high school and beyond plan and what the Zello is. And so Zello is just a, um, a app that they kind of use. And as they complete tasks on the app, it guides them through the, through their career, the, just an exploration of what they want beyond high school. So that's the beyond plan. Yep, Zello is a web-based platform that your student has access to from sixth grade on, and there are exercises and information on that platform that helps them explore their interests, learn about themselves. And by doing so, that will not only give them good information about life after high school, it will also meet a graduation requirement by completing the high school and beyond plan. And as we said, each year they have different tasks. And so for example, next year, in 10th grade for my daughter, she'll be doing her resume, which is very helpful if they're looking for a job or as they start applying for colleges. So it's basically helping them get real life skills. In 11th grade, they learn about financial re aid resources as they're applying for colleges. In 12th grade, they do a senior resume, they do an exit interview, again, giving them skills to help them beyond high school. So it's a plan students 
the school helps the student and guides the student to give them real life example experience and prepare them for post high school life besides just that academic class. So we talked about the fact that we're trying to get them ready for beyond too. And so the high school, the schools, you have classes, but beyond the classes, they do activities to get them ready to applying for colleges or to post, post high school, if they're not going to college, post high school plans, um, pathways. And so oh, I skipped, moving back, okay. And so here we are on high school courses, choices and options. So there are opportunities to take a combination of classes. They can mix and match. So that's the key over here. If you're at a school that offers IB classes, you do not have to take every single IB class at that school. If you're at Skyline and the uh, students taking the IB uh, classes, they don't have to take get an IB diploma. They can just take a few classes in the IB program or get an IB diploma. At this presentation, unfortunately, we can't give too much information about that because at the schools, you will be able to do that because you're gonna be taking those classes mainly in jun your junior and senior year and they will have nights to help you get more information. Right now, we're giving you the basics for ninth grade. Um, there's also something called CTE, which is Korean Technical Education, and there's more information in the course catalog for you to read about and Running Start. Um, I'll be doing a session next month to learn about Running Start, and that is taking uh, basically uh, college classes in high school, and the, the high school pays for it. There are aspects of it as to the fact that you can only start in your junior year. Um, there are also something called WANIC classes, which again starts your junior year, but we're not gonna go into details about it. So if we, we might not address those questions since that's really something you'll learn more about through the course of your ninth grade year. And there's no reason to really delve into that for next year. So we don't wanna give you too much information, otherwise it's overwhelming. So we have to focus on what you need for ninth grade and gives you, give you a general uh, overview. But um, admissions for colleges differ greatly. And so it's really important as your child is getting to 10th and 11th grade, that they look to see what kind of a career or what kind of college they wanna go to and what the requirements for that college would be. And that would that's why your junior and senior year, students really tailor their class choices to fit the pathway and the, the projection as to where they wanna go. So tailoring classes and the course pathways to fit the need of the individual student is the key to the education here. There's no one size fits all. So very often it is very hard because there are so many options and that is overwhelming, but just note that that is really what's gonna happen. Uh, it's because each child, the belief is each child is individual. And so every child has a different pathway that they're going to choose to what best suits their need. Um, also, some of you have asked if you can meet with a counselor now. You are, you are, you know, you can talk to your eighth grade counselor, but it's really now is not the time that you'll be able to talk to your high school counselor. You really only have an opportunity to talk to your high school counselors when your child starts high school. And that would be in September because the first couple of days they're super busy. So if you have questions, I'd encourage you to talk to your child, to talk to, uh, the, to the teachers maybe and say with this class, especially for a type of class, be best suitable, or you can talk to your child's uh, middle school counselor or the, the school liaison to help you better, better understand the wider picture. But there, it's overwhelming because it is so many options and it's just such a wide world around and it's, it's hard to choose. So just keep in mind that there are very few choices the kids will have in ninth grade. So it's for next year, there aren't that many. We're just giving you a bigger picture just to help you understand. Um, so there are options for advanced placement, IB, Running Start, online classes, but really all of those options, you're going to hear about that, you're going to be interested in that, but note that all of this is really for 11th and 12th graders. And career and technical education, there are many options, but again, once your child is in ninth grade, and as you look at the course catalog for 10th grade, 
10th through 12th grade, you'll see some of the career and technical education classes they can take. And I believe there's about one credit required for it, but there are many other classes they can take depending on their interest. And so these are just options to help students choose or find their pathway for their future. Melanie, do you want to talk on this slide? Yep. Um, so through, throughout high school, you will see some reference to different um, assessments, like, like, like big deal tests that happen in high school. Um, uh, Lorna mentioned earlier that often a high school class at the end of the semester, there will be a final exam. That's something that often happens. It's unique to each class. Um, and then there are some tests that are not a part of high school graduation, but are often taken in high school and something that about students will hear about and talk about. Um, so one example is the SAT and the ACT. So these are tests that are offered by, um, by national testing agencies. Um, and some colleges may require an SAT or an ACT score as a part of a college application. Um, not all colleges do, and increasingly colleges are saying that this is not necessary or, um, or is only an optional part of the college application. But those tests are college, college referred to as college entrance exams, typically taken toward the end of junior year in preparation for a college application in the fall of senior year. Two other types of tests you'll hear about are the Advanced Placement AP exam or the International Baccalaureate IB exam. So these are um, co college level classes offered in high school and students can choose whether or not to take the, the exam at the end of the course that will show kind of a culmination of their mastery of the curriculum in the course. It is not a required part of the course, but by sitting that exam and earning a certain score, they may become eligible for earning uh, college credit or having a college requirement waived. Each college has a different policy. And so you would have to look on an individual college's website to see what their policies are for awarding credit or waiving credit based on these exams. The class itself demonstrates that a student has taken academic rigor in high school in preparing for college. The exam results may result in credit once they enter college. And then lastly, the PSAT is the preliminary um, scholastic aptitude test, the preliminary SAT. This is um, a test that we offer to all 10th and 11th graders in October in a school day each year. It is not required to graduate. It is not required for college admission, but it is a good, like no, no risk opportunity for a student to get a sense of what a college entrance exam would be like and how they might score on the SAT. And then it gives them a study guide for if they wanted to further prepare before taking an SAT. So that's an opportunity students will have in October of 10th and 11th grade. Next slide. Thank you. So the MLL, it used to be called ELL, English Language Learner Program. Now it's referred to as MLL, Multilingual Learner Program. It's for students who are in the eighth grade MLL program and in the WIDA, which is the proficiency test, they still show that they need support. And it shows that they need to continue in the MLL program in ninth grade, okay? So high school does have the MLL program. The students take one English language development class from a certificated teacher. And that class focuses on the academic language needed for content classes. So the academic language is very different from regular language. And so that class focuses on that academic language 
for math, language arts, social studies, and so forth. That photo is really of a middle school class, so don't worry about that photo. That's not the class your child would be in. Uh, reading, writing, listening, and speaking. So part of the MLL is really focusing on all four because sometimes kids can you know, uh, uh, do well in English and listening and speaking, but maybe not as much in reading or writing or maybe in reading and writing and not in listening and speaking. So it's really to make sure that all four components, uh, uh, the, the students can are good at those four components because they're all four critical for the student success in school. So the role of the school counselor. Sorry, let me unmute. Yeah. So um, school counselor is a great uh, person with whom families and students can connect throughout high school to receive both academic support, um, uh, advisement, guidance, um, consultation, and then also just on any other topic that um, may be impacting the students' access to their education. So the way that I described my job when I was a high school counselor is my job is to be here to help ensure that a student is making it to um, earning their high school diploma and preparing for life after high school and to help them address any obstacles that they meet along the way. So academic support, we, we monitor progress towards graduation, we ensure a student is on track, we may um, talk to them about, hey, I see you haven't earned PE credit and you need that to graduate, how are you building that into your plan? Um, once a student is in high school, uh, students and families may have questions about a specific course option or a course that they're in where they're struggling, we can help with that. Um, when a student is enrolling and they've just joined Issaquah School District from another country, another state, uh, another school, we help to take a look at their transcript from that other school and um, map that to our graduation requirements so they know what they have remaining that they need to do. And then we provide information about, um, about all of those educational opportunities we've mentioned in this presentation already, like AP and IB and Running Start and online learning. Um, we can share more about pros and cons of each program and for whom it might be a good fit. With social emotional counseling um, in the United States, it is not a stigma to talk to a counselor. This is, we are here to be a support person in high school um, to help students so that if they are struggling with uh, social or emotional issues, they have support so that those, those challenges um, will not present an obstacle from them being able to access their education and be successful progressing toward, um, towards graduation. We know that especially coming out of COVID and the pandemic, that a lot of students have experienced anxiety, um, stress, they're concerned about their education, they're, con they're concerned about their friendships, and these are topics that we are happy to help with and ensure their safety and um, connect with them and try and help them uh, to be successful. Um, around, the, uh, around the United States and around the world, um, data shows that there is anxiety and depression um, that is often presenting in middle school and in high school. Um, students are becoming aware that they are impacted. And so we can be a great resource to help students um, understand what they need to take care of themselves um, emotionally and to advocate for themselves to get to a healthy place and continue to move forward in their life, both academically, socially, and emotionally. Um, Thank you. Thank you, Melanie. Sorry, also cutting out a little bit. Oh, anything else you want to add there, Luna? No, that's great. Uh, also letting you know that uh, the counselor is really the key person if you're trying to get more information on things like Running Start and online. And Running Start, the, the different colleges have information nights, but you might want to consider in ninth grade. So once school starts or in 10th grade, setting up an appointment your child, actually, this is part of the child advocating for this, your child would set up an appointment with a counselor and then they can, 
invite you to come or you can ask to have a meeting with the counselor, but really having a conversation with your child and the counselor to discuss pros and cons of Running Start. I had a question in the chat about online learning, for example, and it's very complex and it's not simple answers to give because there are a lot of aspects to it. Um, and I've been in the district for 22 years. And as my daughter decided to do an online learning class, I learned a lot in talking to one, the counselor, and two, in talking to the online program manager for that. So it's really just note that one person cannot not always give you all the answers. The counselor will start guiding you and then they'll direct you to more experts as needed. But really the person to start for programs like Running Start, online learning, um, just talking about high school and beyond career pathways, all of that you'd be going to the counselor um, to get some suggestions and that would be the academic support part of the counselor's job, okay? And then we talked about the fact that the child children have the same counselor for grades nine through 12. Here's another link as we showed you before. And Gibson Eck is a choice uh, high school. It's lottery based. Students will be accessing the counselor. Melanie, go, do you want to do that? Or are you answering questions? Which one would you prefer? You keep going. Um, okay, thank you. I'm mid answer. Okay, perfect. So to access a counselor, the counselors actually have an appointment a link. So students email them on the appointment link. Also on Canvas, you probably have already experienced that. The students can email, but usually the counselors ask the students to email them or set up an appointment through the appointment link uh, or going to the counseling office. Uh, very often there's really not no drop-in because counselors take so many uh, students depending on what's going on. And families can email their parents, uh, the child's counselor to set up an appointment. And then eighth grade parents should definitely wait till September to meet with the high school counselor. And if you have any questions for this year, for course selection, talk to your middle school counselor. And uh, starting in the end of February for some schools, uh, whenever your eighth grade uh, transition night happens, after that night, after the counselors have presented the information, then you're invited to ask the counselors for suggestions and advice for high school. And that's for all of you, it's for your eighth grade um, school counselors. The College and Career Centers at the school is a resource for students, but a family member may accompany the student for a scheduled meeting starting in 10th grade. It's a great place for students to help them plan for their post-secondary goals uh, and plan for colleges, get some information about colleges, the high school, uh, high schools also very often invite speakers. So they might have, for example, someone coming from a specific college to come and present. Um, so they do a lot of different activities. For example, this is a Skyline site. So they're having uh, support for WASFA and POSFA, which is financial aid. They have some uh, college fairs for some colleges in the Midwest. They have a Bellevue College Discovery Day they have different events going on in the career center and even ninth graders can go to it. So uh, University of Idaho, for example, is upcoming on March 7th. So this information is shared with the students and the students can go to the high school career, college and career center at different times. Uh, sometimes it's during lunch, sometimes it's after school, sometimes it's in the evening, but the center is really to help the students get more information about options after high school. Um, so, of course, the center facilitates exploration, um, career exploration, high school planning. There's some information about military, um, different colleges, scholarship information, job opportunities, volunteer opportunities, a lot of that information. There are a lot of bulletin boards. Just imagine that there are a lot of bulletin boards, lots of flyers, lots of information in this college and career center. Um, and as a parent, the, your job is to encourage your child to go to the college and career center during lunch, after school, before school, when it's open, um, and then just find out what the opportunities are for them, especially starting in 10th grade as they're trying to figure out what their interest is. And schools have something called nest time and parents, kids can schedule 
times to go. Melanie, you want to say something at this time? Um, it, it, it's called nest time at Issaquah High School. It's called flex time at other high schools. Um, okay, okay. And, and so I'll let you continue there. Perfect. So what you, for me, what I want you to know is that it exists and encourage your child to visit and check out the resources. My daughter is in ninth grade. She's already gone there a couple of times and just looked at some of the college opportunities, but I know she's going to be interested in going there more often in 10th and 11th grade. So college entrance requirement. A lot of parents really worry about this because the whole, the biggest stress is I want my kid to take all the classes that will allow them to get into that college when they graduate. Um, but it's really hard because the colleges have so many different requirements. And so it's important to kind of think as to where your child is heading, what career pathway they're going to. For example, if they're doing marketing or uh, you know fashion or business or something, do they really need all the AP courses in chemistry and physics? And so what courses do they, are they really looking to get based on what college or what program they're going in? Uh, nowadays, very often colleges have direct admit, which means you're admitted into, directly admitted into a specific college within the university. And so what their, what their end goal is, is something that you want them to also think about, but you also are looking to help them be well-rounded. So just making sure they're not you know, just taking all of these rigorous classes, but they're not taking some classes to help them think and choose what classes they might be, what career, what opportunities they might, might exist. The art classes, the uh, CTE courses might be things that they wanna just take also um, and choose as electives to explore their interests. Uh, the grade point average is often a factor as colleges accept students. So you wanna make sure that you just don't, students don't take just very rigorous classes, but then get Bs and Cs in them. You also wanna make sure they take a class to challenge them, but then they can take a good class, uh, getting a pretty good grade because the grade point average is important. Um, the college is also asked to have students write multiple essays and have extracurricular activities to see if the child is well-rounded demonstrated leadership skills. Um, so more and more colleges also are not looking for students to take SATs or ACTs. It's an optional, and if it's, it is optional with not uh, no weight or on the score. So again, it's really, really dependent on the school. So I would highly recommend, for example, this is the UW link for what the college requirements are. And you will see that the UW requirements differ a bit from the University of Oregon's requirements to get into college or DigiPen, which is uh, another you know, option for a private school and very targeted uh, learning for uh, education. So every college is slightly different. So also think about where they might be going and what kind of major they might be doing. What's their interest? What's their passion for what they wanna do later on? And you might not know that right now, and that's what Zello does. It helps them just kind of explore. And also in ninth and 10th grade, that's why a lot of the many, the big picture, the, the hard option, what are you gonna do? They don't really have to make this decision, just so you know, they're not making any really that hard decisions till 11th and 12th grade. Next year, there are a few op options that they really have to make as to what they wanna take. So don't, don't think, oh my gosh, I'm gonna decide their future in the next two months, you're not. There's very narrowed focus for ninth grade of what your choices will be. 10th grade, you have a little bit more options and 11th and 12th grade, a lot more. So you're starting small. And then high school athletics. The great thing about high school is there are also many athletic opportunities for students. And things to note, just like in middle school, there is a varsity, junior varsity, lots of practices. Um, there are different sports offered each kind of term. So there's a fall sports. There is, so they have cross country, football, golf, soccer for girls, swimming and diving, tennis, football for spot fall. Winter, they have different sports. Also gives you the different um, coaches for the different sports. In spring, they have different uh, sports options also. 
they also have post seasons on so the summer they do a lot of practice also for um for track there's also many of these some of these actually i'm going to say start kind of in summer in august especially for football for track for swimming their activities that happen starting in august so just keep in mind and keep on the lookout if your child is interested in sports in June to kind of see what kind of sport opportunities are there and when they start. But the main thing is if your child is interested in a sport, make sure that they have completed final forms, make sure they have done their physical and the final forms is needed. It's a whole bunch of forms they need to complete. It's an online process and it's usually, they start it in sometime in early August. So make sure they have an account in final form so that you can submit a lot of those uh, documents that's needed like the, the physical. Clubs, extracurricular opportunities, part-time jobs and volunteer opportunities. So those are all things students should really be uh, engaging in throughout their high school life. There is no requirement for graduation for volunteer work, but if they complete a certain number of volunteer opportunity hours, they do get recognized for that. So I would recommend, it also looks really good on applications and so forth, but it's not just about volunteering, it's about showing passion and interest. So, you know, I would recommend you try to focus on a certain kind of volunteer work to show commitment and passion and enthusiasm rather than two, year, two hours here, two hours there, just to complete volunteer activities versus commitment to its, a, certain, a certain passion or a certain interest. Um, again, the Korean College uh, um, Center posts part-time opportunities uh, and extracurricular opportunities, but in general, the ASB, off, the ASB the, their Facebook page, the announcements, they provide a lot of information for students around that. They also have so many different clubs at the schools. It's amazing. Um, while the middle schools have great clubs, the high schools have a lot more clubs. And again, it's because the, they're so much bigger that it gives them the opportunity to really find a niche, you know, baking club, badminton band, book review, chair, chess club, choir, DECA, big one, drill team, Dungeons and Dragons, students in charge, FCCLA, Girls Who Code, Green Team, on his Society, and the list goes on. So it's quite impressive as to what your child can do. And I would recommend um, helping your child, encouraging them to join two or three different clubs to help them find their passion. Clubs usually meet after school, and so they can join even in two or three clubs. There's an after school bus, just like in middle school. It doesn't take them to exactly the same spot, but um, might have to walk a little bit more, but it's there because part of the thing that clubs helps the students do is be leaders in that club, but also as they demonstrate that leadership, they can then document that for their colleges to see what the what kind of leadership skills the student had, especially if they're doing certain something in that club. But mainly in eighth, uh, sorry, ninth and tenth grades for them for their social well-being to help them connect, make new friends, explore interests. Because the ninth grade year can be very scary, very new, the big school, lots of kids around. So it's really to help them find their niche, their their people, their tribe. So you know, helping them and guiding them, and that's really going to be your role in the, over the summer to next year to be their coach and their mentor and just listen to see what they're interested in and helping them kind of get to what they want to meet their goal. And just a few reminders as we're wrapping up on our slide deck, um, the special ed for students who have an IEP who get special ed services or may have a 504 plan or a health plan, those plans, though, that IEP will follow your child to high school. So you'll continue to get those services you don't need to apply for anything additional. For the 504 plans, the counselors in middle school, talk to the counselors in high school and do kind of a handoff. Same thing with the health plans between the nurses in middle and high school. 
the IEP case manager for your child in special who receives special services in middle school will talk to your child's IEP case manager in high school. If there's something specific that you're wondering about, asking about, um, you are welcome to email your child's IEP case manager and ask for a meeting to better prepare you for that transition. Um, transportation routes might change. So make sure again, your ch child will still, depending on where you live, may or may not be eligible for a bus if you're living closer to the school or if you live further away from the school. So in August, make sure you go to the school website and check the transportation route. Again, just like in middle school, all children are assigned a laptop in high school. And it is even more crucial for you to check your child's grades on Canvas. Um, from middle school to high school, you definitely wanna give your child a little bit more independence, but you wanna make sure you're monitoring them and advising them um, just to make sure that they're meeting their, their grades and their needs. And I just realized that we skipped an important slide somehow. Check attendance and graduation milestones on Melanie. Melanie, I don't know how we skipped that slide accidentally. Melanie was really instrumental in helping create this, this slide, this page. But in family access, all starting next year, you're going to find a new tab. And this new tab is called graduation requirements. And this tab, is amazing because it really helps you figure out what the courses your child needs to graduate. So you can see what's needed to graduate it, to graduate, and then as they're taking classes each semester, it'll show you what classes they have completed and what credits they have received and what credits they still need to get in order to graduate. So it gives you a really nice snapshot. In the olden days, before we had this lovely uh, site, you had to really write it all down and map it all out, but now you have this visually for you. So after your, you know, your child's ninth or 10th grade year, you can sit down with your child and say, okay, so you have completed these courses. What else do you need to graduate? Oh, look, you already have this number of credits. So now what kind of, you know, lab class do you, science class do you want? Is there something you want in a CTE pathway? Do you want to do you know, something else? So it just kind of shows you what you need to graduate. Have you completed the lab, science lab, the science elective? What's needed in math? Three, how many do you have? Okay, now what are your options for that? And you can also click right here on show courses to see what are some other options for you uh, to fulfill that requirement. And it really helps tie in the options children have for that. Um, towards graduation, because sometimes it can be overwhelming to plan and to ensure that your child is on the pathway to graduate and is uh, getting all the required classes that they need. Okay, um, so course selection events are happening at all the high schools, and I know we have the dates for them. And so we'll, Gibson Neck, the application opens on February 28th. Um, Issaquah High School, the event is on the 14th. Skyline the High School. Lorna, the application closes on February oh, 28th. Sorry. You must submit by February 28th. Yes, it's sorry. It's, yes, it's, it's open, open right now. now. Due by Thank February you. 28th. Yes. yes, it's open now and it's due by February 28th. Um, there are a couple sessions um, planned for the high school transition from middle school. So please check your school's um, emails, the bulletins coming out. I know that you should be getting emails from the Issaquah High, Skyline High, Liberty, depending on what school your child will be attending and let, giving you information. In February, sometime you'll get the Zoom link for Skyline for the Q&A sessions, but they have um, they have this an orientation night coming for students and parents going to their schools coming up. So check the dates because I don't have all the exact uh, data for that as they're still working on some plans. Gibson Eck is a project-based school as we talked about. The application's already open and then it's due by February 28th. Students are selected for admission by a lottery that is held in this on the second. And go to the Gibson Eck information uh, website to read more because it's a 
project-based school and it's very different from the other three comprehensive schools. So that's why we couldn't include too much information for that they have their own specific information night. So you're thinking now there's so much information, what can you do to help prepare for this transition? So one of the things I would recommend is visit the school website and become familiar with the information on the high school, uh, especially on some of the course catalog pages um, for the course selection part. But then beyond the course selection part, become familiar with the clubs, with the, uh, the sports. You know, talk to your child, oh, look at all these clubs that are there. What do you think you'd be interested? Look at these sports. What would you be interested? Let's look and see. Because there are tryouts for some sports or there are deadlines and when you can start the sport. So you want to make sure if, if you're interested in certain sports that you know what those dates are. And for your child starting in ninth grade, they might just need a little bit of help to help them remember, oh, I should be doing this and kind of planning for those clubs and activities and the dates that um, they should be, the club, the sport, for example, might be beginning or the tryout or for these different activities. Review and discuss options in the course guide for the ninth grade classes as you get them next month and the month after. Build relationship when the, your child is in school, try to have at least one meeting between the ninth and 10th grade year with the, the high school counselor. And then finally, talk to other high school parents and students about high school, about courses, clubs, extracurricular activities. One of the biggest things that I'd say is also talk to your child about what they've learned right now. One of the things you can do about high school um, preparation and what they're doing on their Zello activity. And after your freshman orientation, look for the freshman orientation, that's in August, but um, attend the, the, the night in February, March, and really looking at the website periodically between now and you know school starting in August will really help you better understand. You can actually already subscribe to the high school bulletins that will appear, will arrive every Thursday, just so you can kind of get an idea of what, what kind of messages the high schools are sending to the families and just kind of get ready for those kinds of uh, thoughts uh, and questions. So thank you very much. And I am going to stop recording shortly, but I highly recommend ask or encourage you if you would use your phone camera or um, Susie is gonna put the link in the chat right now, if you could uh, open the feedback form and complete the feedback. And while you're doing that, I am going to stop recording and then I would like to start answering some questions. Melanie, are there some questions in your chat that you want to address right away or do you want me to start going through mine? I think uh, just a couple things to emphasize and you have it on this slide as well. There's There's been questions about um, who, like, who should I, who should my child or who should I consult with about a question or can I meet with a, a high school counselor to choose these classes? And I just wanna emphasize again that um, the best people to help your student think about their ninth grade choices are their current teachers and their current counselor because they understand the ninth grade options and they also understand like the strengths and um, needs of the students in their own school, where a high school counselor doesn't have that perspective and knowledge about your student individually. Um, so that came up a, a, a bit. I think there's a broad array of other questions or what I, I don't know that there was like consistent themes that I was seeing. That's fine. So I'm gonna stop the recording right now and I'm just gonna go through 